The goal, in my opinion, should be to get to roughly 250,000 a year in income or higher. Why is that? The moment you start making over 250,000 a year and you do that consecutively for at least two years or longer, you become what's called an accredited investor, okay? As an accredited investor in the United States, you get access to what are called non-public investments, okay? And then there are public investments. Today, if you wanna buy a stock, if you wanna buy a house, if you wanna buy a bond, a mutual fund, a treasury note, these are all public investments. It doesn't matter how much money you have, how much money you make, what you have in savings. If it's public, anyone can access it. A non-public investment is uh, something kind of like a, say a, one example would be a preferred stock or tier one asset, something like a, in the real estate world, where let's say, um, I'm, I'm sure most of us are familiar with uh, a guy named Grant Cardo. Okay, you can find him online. He's a billionaire, does real estate, and he does what's called syndication. So he syndicates, he, he acquires money from many different people. He gets money from accredited investors and non-accredited investors. And there's two different pools. If you're a non-accredited investor, you get access to this in terms of your returns versus if you're an accredited investor, you get access to a lot more opportunities. Tier one, double digit returns, better access keys to a kingdom, AKA the United States. This is how the United States operates. If you were to look at many different cultures and demographics in the United States, it's pretty interesting how majority of Americans, we're talking 70, 80% live paycheck to paycheck and the average income in America, 2021, somewhere in the neighborhood of 60,000 a year. And it's very interesting how you're taught to save your money invest in the stock market and mutual funds for 40 years, accumulate maybe a million, two million by the time you're 59 and a half, and then withdraw those funds to live off of for the rest of your life. And meanwhile, while you're working, you're encouraged to obtain debt like cars, student loans, credit cards, personal loans, mortgage, and you spend your whole life paying off your debt like a good citizen, right? take all this time in the world to pay off your debt. Most people take a lot of time because they don't make a what? They don't make a lot of money. And you're supposed to save a portion of your money and invest a portion of your money all to what? Liquidate it in your later 50s and 60s and you never reach accreditation status. I find that very interesting. So some will argue and some will say that that particular uh, accredited investor status is a very unique way to suppress and oppress certain demographics. We won't get into that, right? But I just want you to see what structures you currently live under. And then I'm gonna share with you kingdom. And then you get to decide which one do you wanna operate under, okay? And when you make that decision, uh, just know that is whichever route you go, it ain't gonna be easy. It is not gonna be easy because you're gonna have to unlearn and relearn if you decide to go the kingdom route, and if you decide to stay in the world, you're gonna have to work your tail off. You gotta make over 250,000 a year consecutively or have a million dollars plus in net worth. And guess what? Your house, your primary residence, is not part of your net worth. A lot of people think it is, but it is not. That's crazy. And that is the number one purchase that majority of Americans make is a home, primary residence, but you can't add it to your net worth. And arguably, that's most of people's net worth, especially if they pay off the house. So step one, increase your income to 250,000 or higher, okay?